Welcome back, guys. Another episode. Um, today we are doing something different. I wanted to go. I wanted to do this a long time ago uh, because it's one of those questions that I get a lot. People emailing me or messaging me and stuff like that um, is to do with the fuel system. It's how to make your own dual pump. So before we get to that, let's talk about why you would need a dual pumper in the first place. Um, you know, there's a lot of, I won't say misconceptions, but different experiences that people have with different fuel pumps. So a lot of people got 220, 255 wall bros. That's a very popular one. And they say, oh, it'll hit 500, you know, an E, a 93 and whatnot. Yes, at its limits. Um, so anytime in my, in this shop, anytime you cross, I would say 600, 650, um, we recommend to the client that, hey, please, you know, get a dual pumper, which means two pumps instead of single. Now, to get to above 500, we usually recommend a Walbro 450. That usually works. Um, I think one of my videos, I, I go over that. But um, regardless, we're at a position where now that you need two pumpers, two uh, fuel pumps, and one wouldn't do. So... If you look in the market, there are already uh, companies and hangers, companies that make hangers that um, already have two pumps, three pumps, what and whatnot. Um, so you basically can get that. It's uh, you know relatively spice pricey, or make it yourself. For someone who's aiming for 700, 800, 900 horsepower, um, this system actually works. There are other companies um, like Busher, and I think. STM, I'm not really sure. I know Busher makes it for sure. They have a dual pumper using the stock hanger, which works. It's pretty simple. Um, but so today I'm going to show you how to make it. So I have a, a Evo 8.9. And to be honest, this is pretty similar to the Evo 10s as well. Same procedure to do it on the 10. But first, let's talk about how the stock um, system works. On top, on the Evo 8s and 9s, you basically have a feed and a return. Well, I'm sorry, uh, a feed and a return. The return is very small, as you can see. And we have a third one, a third connector, that goes to the other tank because Evos have two tanks. Uh, both Evo 8s and 9s, they both have, uh, and 10s have uh, two tanks. Now, a lot of people kind of get quick connects here for the siphon and switch. So they use the smaller one for siphon, which is the, the return line, the stock return line, and they make the stock return uh, line connecting to here, and they use a quick connect and switch to a 6AN. That works. Sometimes it works. On some cars, it doesn't. I've tested this on myself, and like I said, sometimes it works. And the reason why it doesn't work is because of this. You, you can flip this. This is how the siphon actually works. There's no mechanical pumps there on the other tank in order for the fuel to come to the main tank. But what they do is um, they use pressure differential in order for it to uh, siphon the pump. I'm sorry, siphon the fuel from the other tank. So this is the siphon and this is the stock return. If there's a differential, if there's a difference in pressure, the fuel will tend to go wherever uh, there's low pressure versus high pressure. It's not going to walk into high pressure. So if this pressure on this side of this tank is lower, it'll automatically start siphoning through this mechanism. And all it is is just pathways that create um, uh, low to high pressure, uh, I guess, fronts. So a lot of people switch these because this comes with a nipple, which you can easily use a quick connect, but the stock return doesn't. So if you want to do a 6AN, you can just, you know, do a quick connect 6AN and do your 6AN line. Like I said, it works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. So a lot of people just flip them, but the line itself is different sizes, and I, that causes a issue sometimes when this whole system is based on uh, pressure differential in order for it to work. So you can do this and a little bit extra work, but do it correctly. The first step into making a, a dual pumper is uh, first measure where your pump sits, right? Measure from here to here, 
because that's where you're gonna have to put your pump. Um, uh, and that's how you choose the length of uh, the, the fuel line that you're gonna use to install the pumper. Now, after you measured it, obviously write it down somewhere, you're gonna have to trim all this out. So by all this, I mean this main uh, housing right here, and there's a filter inside that basically covers uh, the main pump and it filters through, not just the sock here. There's another filter here, so don't be alarmed. So basically, when you disassemble everything, after you uh, trim everything out, only thing you're gonna keep is this sending unit, I'm sorry, is this uh, fuel leveler and the electrical connection. Everything else you can trim out and keep uh, the siphon what it is and I put a barb fitting on the, uh, the return line and kept this the same. Now I actually chose um, 6AN to do this, which I will uh, tell you why in a little bit. But this car is gonna reach pretty high horsepower. So that's part one. You have to trim everything else so it looks like this. So remember when you use bulkhead fittings, the, the surface that you bulk everything onto, bolt everything onto, needs to be flat. So make sure you get this as flat as possible and on both ends. This will take a little bit of time, but if you've done this a few times, it's just you know exactly what to do. So that's part one of what you have to do. So once you have everything trimmed, let's talk about these fittings. Now, I'm using a six uh, return and then I'm also using a six feed, and I use two because uh, in the corner there's less space between uh, the seat, or I'm sorry, the metal mount, the metal cover on top, and, and the surface of this. So I use a shallow uh, bulkhead fitting. Also, when you choose your bulkhead, make sure that you know, it comes with a soft uh, aluminum washer or plastic. That way it can, you know, bend and take the shape of your, your, your thing. Uh, I usually go with Vibrant. They, they work. I'm also using a, um, a straight-up uh, bulkhead instead of a 90-degree shallow angle in the middle one because there's more room there. And I'm just going to add a 6AN uh, AN fitting here. The, the second, the third, I'm sorry, the fourth fitting you'll need is an electrical connection bulkhead two wires. Now be very careful when you buy these. You have to really make sure the gauge that they're advertising or you're using of the wires is correct. But if you get the gauges wrong, which is the size of these holes, uh, you'll leak. And basically put them in. So now you have two pump feed, it's both 6AN, and this is the one we like to do, uh, up to like maybe a thousand horsepower, and a six return. But this whole system actually is going to be an 8 AN feed, and I'll show you why. Um, then you'll just add fuel lines here and connect your two uh, wall or whatever you're using, and you just clamp it onto here following this height which you measured before. And that's basically it. And let me show you the rest of the parts. These two 6 AN these two 6AN feeds will connect to this Y. This is a 6AN in, two 6AN ins, and an 8 out. So the system is actually going to be 8 ANs. In between, I like to put, because anytime you use a Y, you have to use some kind of check valve. So I'm going to use this check valve, which I already set for um, 6AN and make sure to follow the flow. Make sure you follow that. The pump side goes on this end and the rail side goes on this end. So basically, I'm going to put this only on one of the pumps, the pump that's gonna be triggered by a hop switch, not the main pump. So the reason why I wanna do that is because say the fuel, this is the main pump, say, or this one, doesn't matter. Main pump is on, some of the fuel might go back into this way to the other and back into the tank and you'll have low pressure. This happened to me a few times on radium old style 
uh, hangers, which I had to fix. Um, their fitting was leaking. They have a seal there. So I had to basically redo the seals uh, when you use single pump on a dual pumper system. So now you have the fuel pumps set up with your correct lines and all that stuff. I'm going to show you a complete when it's done. Um, then from here, after the Y, the 8AN for us, we use only fuel labs, uh, 40 micron for high power. And there's an in and out label. So this is a fuel filter that we're using. Um, this is a eight inch, I think, fuel filter that goes in line and then goes to the rail. It connects to one end or this end, doesn't matter. This is a radium rail made for Evo 8s and 9s. Now, I like this because I can put a fuel dampener in here or a gauge or whatever I want, but usually with you know, large injectors, I put fuel dampeners. Um, and it really helps smooth everything out. And then a return line, it feeds into here, injectors get fed here, uh, and then a return line goes from this end to a fuel labs, fuel pressure regulator. And this is a 6AN, it goes in here and out there and basically connects back if you have an ethanol sensor, you put it in line in the return one and connects back to your return line here. And that is basically it. It's not difficult. It's just um, there's a good tutorial on it I saw on, on Evo M. Um, but, you know, he's using brass fittings and whatnot. But we do it this way because it's easy to diagnose things. And then basically the hop switch goes into the second pump. The primary pump is still triggered um, by the main harness, and the secondary pump uh, is triggered by the uh, hop switch at setting to whatever you want. And that's basically it. This will support a dual Walbro 255s will support close to 1,000. Um, a uh, dual 45 will definitely support 1,000. Um, I don't feel like there's anything you don't need to go bigger than that because then you start running into uh, amperage and electrical issues. I mean, I haven't had many cases of that, but it's it's known to happen. Um, basically, what I mean is each one of these pumps draw a certain amperage. Uh, I think like the 450s are 16 amps. So think about it. Like you got two pumps running on boost, 16 amps each. So it's like 30 amps and given everything else that's running, it's not really uh, ideal. I mean, it's only on wide open throttle, but still. If you go with larger pumps, it'll draw more. So that's basically how you do a dual pumper using a stock hanger. All right, so if you have done everything correctly, um, your finished product should look like this, right? So I basically measured um, the distance, this is exactly the same distance, including when I put the um, socks on as the stock hanger will sit. So you'll have no level issue. Um, you know, basically put back everything the way it is, the, the, <clears throat> the leveler and everything. On top, we fed the wires through. This was a 12 gauge one that I got, which connects to the secondary pump. And I actually made a two pin connector. I used a two pin connector. So every time I, if I have to take the pump off for something, I don't have to take the relay kit for the other one off. Uh, I just put the tape on here just to see uh, that's the ground. I'm using the same colors I typically do when it comes to secondary pumps. And uh, basically hardwired the relay uh, harness. I'm using Hella 3040. And then from here on, uh, either one of these wires, it really doesn't matter to trip the uh, the relay, so the pump kicks on. On one of them, the hop switch, one side is going to be connected and the other side is going to chassis ground. And on the hop switch, one side is going to the battery and that's basically it. This is your dual Walbro 450 uh, stock hanger pump kit. And this is actually Eric's. So you're going to see that in action uh, sometime in a couple of weeks, maybe most three weeks. 
Um, if you have any successes, say, hey, I did it, you know, using a different method, and this is the power I made, let me know, put, put comments on here. And I want to thank you guys on that note uh, for, you know, just, just being supportive of everything that I'm doing. It is difficult. Like, it's... It's, it's hectic in here, especially now the race season. It's like crazy. I'm, I'm doing as much as I could. There's a ton of cars that I've tuned, and it's just like I, I don't get the chance to because it's using different footages and putting everything together. It's, it's difficult. But this is something easy and simple that I wanted to get out for a long time. It was on my list. Um, so good episodes are coming. A lot of you will be interested. I'm doing one, two, I think like four cars that uses our stock... Um, uh, harness plug and play ECU master and you know we make custom kits for you know whatever you need it truly is plug and play and it, it's tucked in you don't really see it if you want to show it yes we can make one for you like that but um, it's good and the tuning on those things is really awesome just so those of you who are interested in the ECU master reach out to me either email on Facebook or the shops email on Facebook uh, which I, at the end of the video, I put on every video. And we are located in Illinois. I know a lot of people ask, hey, where are you located? I'm sorry I don't mention that in every video I'm going to start. Uh, we are located in Illinois. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support. Please subscribe. It really does help. Really motivates me to do more of these videos. Um, and thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.